Well, hello and welcome to the weekly update here on YouTube. Thank you for joining me. Now, last week I spoke about 3757 being the opening range high. If we break that, we're in bullish opening range, looking for the markets to move higher. I also said if that does happen, we're likely to go to 3900. And that's exactly where we are here, right at this significant resistance level. So that was absolutely spot on what I said last week. Now, right now, when I'm looking at the SPX, I see an inverse head and shoulders, which which is a bullish charting pattern. We've got the left shoulder, we've got the head and the right shoulder here. We've also got a bull flag forming here. So this is very bullish right now, particularly if it does break above 3,900 and the 100 EMA. This is very bullish uh, setup. Uh, if I'm looking at the QQQ, I think there is some room there to move uh, to the upside as well. Uh, we need three Qs, one, two, three, right, QQQ. Uh, and I think that could move to 290. That's certainly where it could move. Now, the SPX is at that um, resistance level, so it may have a bit of a retracement before it goes higher. Um, and I think the Federal, uh, the Federal Reserve, the QQQ has a little more room to move. Okay, uh, so that's what I'm seeing there, but very bullish on the actual technicals here on the SPX. Inverse head and shoulders, bull flag, opening range, bullish, everything looks bullish. When I look at the dollar, I spoke about this last week as well, and I said, look, if it does break this lower trend line, it's certainly been in a strong uptrend for quite some time since April, um, the US dollar moving higher and higher. It's now broken that upward channel and broken that lower trend line. I said, if it does break that, the market's going higher. That's exactly what happened. Another thing that I got right from last week. So if we do start to see further weakness in the US dollar, the markets will continue to go up. The skew, the perceived risk of a two standard deviation move or more to the downside, in other words, a market crash, uh, the smart money, are they worried about a market crash? At a skew of 112, no. Anything below 115 is very bullish. So they're actually very bullish to smart money right now. The market momentum, the amount of stocks above their 50-day moving average is now 55%. A month ago, it was only 11%. So certainly the market momentum is bullish right now. And uh, that's another bullish sign. So quite a few things that are bullish right now right we've got the inverse head and shoulders bull flag opening range bullish the skew is bullish the weakening of the US dollar slight weakening of the US dollar is bullish uh, market momentum is bullish everything's bullish but I'm not taking any new trades this week why because the Federal Reserve speaking on Wednesday we can see on Wednesday the Federal Reserve statement the federal funds rate and their Federal Reserve press conference will all occur on Wednesday. So we don't want to be taking new trades ahead of that announcement. Now, my best educated guess, now that we've got most of the earnings past us right now, the huge trillion dollar companies have reported their earnings, the market's taking a bit of a breather, but now we have the Federal Reserve speaking on Wednesday. Okay. Now, my best educated guess is they'll raise rates by 0.75% in November. Then they could say, potentially, they could say that they're going to pause raising rates, right, for say three months or so, and just see the effect on inflation and the economy with all the rate rises they've done so far. That pausing of rates, if they do that, the markets would go higher. But they could also come out and say, look, we're raising rates in November, 0.75% or 0.5%, but we're also going to continue to raise rates because we're not seeing inflation come down as much as we would like, right? That could happen. If that happens, the markets will go down, right? So I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm not going to take a trade based on what the Federal Reserve may or may not do next well, this, this week. That makes absolutely no sense to do that, okay? So the best thing for me to do right now is flatten my positions, close out the positions I've got and let the Federal Reserve do their thing and then we can come into some new trades next week when the probabilities and the edges, what's an edge? A higher probability of one thing happening over another, where the edges and the probabilities are in my favor based on the charts, based on what I'm seeing, not based on some external force like the Federal Reserve. Half the time the Federal Reserve doesn't know what they're doing, let alone me trying to predict what they're going to do and how it's going to impact the market. And it's not just always the actual news that impacts the markets, it's the market's interpretation of the news, right? So that's the other thing. So what I'm trying to say is in a nutshell is I am bullish on the market short term, please hear me, short term, but uh, I'm not going to place any new trades with the Federal Reserve 
meeting coming out. The market rewards above average traders. It rewards patient, disciplined traders. And that's what I want to be this week. Sit on the sidelines, be disciplined, even though I have some great looking trading opportunities. So the trades that we got into last week was on Tesla. We entered into a call debit spread that I spoke about last week on the video for $270 a contract. We bought the 210, sold the 215 for the 18th or the 11th. And we can see that that stock Tesla has moved up from $214 where we entered to just over $228 right based on um, this level here of 200 round number support and a double bottom here pattern or a W pattern looking for it to move higher so that has moved up a good $14 and that's enabled our call debit spread to go into profit we bought it for $270 a contract right now it's worth 363 so that's a 34% return in a week $93 a contract some of our members have 10 contracts and have made $930 income in a week pretty impressive right 34% return so what I'm going to do now is be very conservative I'm going to take the profit ahead of the Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday lock in a 34% return for a week which is fantastic and I'm closing the trade out the other trade that we had on Tesla was looking to buy the stock at this current price this stock is undervalued where it is right now and if I could buy it down at 200 and get paid $832 a share to do it uh, then I would be very happy about that, right? So uh, $832 for every 100 shares I'm agreeing to buy, $8.32 per share. Make sure I get that straight. So $832 income we received last week for selling the 200 put, agreeing to buy the stock at $200, undervalued, great fundamentals, great earnings growth, great revenue growth, the whole thing, we loved it. But now the Federal Reserve meeting coming out, right now I can buy back that 200 put for $3.30. I sold it for $8.32. I can buy it back for $3.30 right now. That's a $502 income in a week or a 3% return on the risk I was taking, right? So if I can lock in that profit, same with the call debit spread, I've locked in two great winning trades, right? So I'm going to take both of those winning trades, flatten my positions ahead of the Federal Reserve. And the only other one we had was GLD, a call debit spread. This one's sitting at about a break even. We entered at $71 a contract. Now it's at 69. We bought the 156, sold the 158. Still like the trade, but I'm just going to close it out. Wait for next week, right? So it's we're down $2 on that. So two big winning trades and one break even slash $2 loss. Uh, just close those three trades out now. Let's let the Federal Reserve come out and we'll get into some new exciting trades next week. So let's keep an eye on the overall markets. Let's keep an eye on the US dollar. And another thing that I'm looking at uh, as well, a little bit more longer term, is Apple. We know it's a huge company and has a big bearing on what happens with the stock market. If we were to see it break this trend line, uh, then that could certainly spell trouble for the markets, right? Certainly seeing the markets move lower. If the US dollar does start to surge again, that could be problems for the market. If the Federal Reserve says they're going to continue to raise rates aggressively, that could be problems for the market, right? So let's just wait and see what the Federal Reserve is going to do first. Keep an eye on the US dollar and let's have a look at what the overall market does. Then we will be set up next week for some new exciting positions. I've got some great trades there, but I have to be patient, right? Remember, market rewards, disciplined, patient traders and that's what we're going to be this week and we'll get into some new trades next week thank you very much for listening all the best and bye for now